Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, uh, the challenges that the researchers face uh, in, in evaluating uh, the mechanically served MCSs and peripheral artificial hearts. Uh, obviously, uh, we don't direct, you know, as soon as you find out, you don't put them in the human being, you got to test them out. And uh, uh, the challenges that they have downstairs, I call downstairs because it's in the dungeon, uh, lab. Uh, I have uh, no disclosure. I have nothing to disclose on it besides I pumped a few Bivacore uh, and I am a little biased about that. And uh, there were no humans uh, harmed in the experiment with this animals. So mainly we're gonna talk about bovine. Uh, you can, you know what bovine is, but uh, we're also gonna talk about why bovine before we talk about bovine themselves for the MCSs and the peripheral artificial hearts. Uh, in, the, in the labs, uh, we have animal labs, all, all kind of testings are being done on all kind of animals, including the mice, the hamsters, pigs, ships, and bovine. Ideally speaking, uh, swine would be the most resembling the human anatomy uh, for testing the uh, MCSs and the total artificial hearts. Overall size and the precision of the organs are most uh, resembling human beings. Chest cavity is just about human size. Uh, horizontal makes uh, human-like incisions, operations. Uh, all the uh, anatomically, they are pretty much where they are in human beings. So it makes it very easy for them to work. As you can see, the, uh, the planes are very similar. The heart are very, very similar, except maybe the ascending aorta is a little bit bigger, a little bit longer in the, in the uh, uh, pig heart than the human. But other than that, it's just uh, uh, a fantastic match. Why are we not using pigs for uh, the MCS and, and the mechanical uh, the total artificial heart? Uh, because they are very energetic. They don't listen to you when they're on the pig. They don't behave. Uh, very aggressive. Uh, they don't like anything sticking out of their body. They will attack the catheters. They'll eat up, chew up the, uh, the control cables. Uh, they grow very fast, if you didn't know. Uh, and uh, that could be a problem for uh, mechanical circulatory support devices because the, normally they are designed for human being and you know they're flowing maybe five, 10 liters at the most. But if you have very big uh, animal model, it may require much higher flows. Uh, they will make a very good subject matter if you have to implant something like a valve or something like that and nothing coming out of it, and it probably make a very good uh, uh, test models. Sheep are very uh, identical to human anatomy as well. They are very docile, they're smart. The problem is uh, they're very shocked very easily. The tissues are very fragile. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Cohn used to say that you can literally uh, shout at a ship and shock it to death. Uh, they break a leg and they'll have a heart attack just because they broke a leg. So, so we come to cows. Cows as human uh, test models for vets and uh, the, the vets, uh, what, what's, what's good for uh, bovine, they're very docile, easy to handle. The identical blood rheology, the blood RBCs, WBCs, and plates are pretty much very similar to the human being. So you know if, if that uh, device is going to create a problem with the RBCs, or we'll know it for uh, The robust immune system, just like the human being, uh, this, this breed, Coranta breed, uh, has limited growth. So you know for the span of the device testing, they grow, but they don't grow too much to, uh, too much to handle. The problem with uh, the biggest problem, however, is with bovine is, is, is the uh, fully developed coagulation systems. So that's a major drawback uh, uh, and, and it, it, is, it causes challenge for anticoagulation management. Uh, normally people use committing for anticoagulations. Uh, it's not uh, uh, suitable for bovine because the comedin is metabolized in stomach. Uh, Antiplatelets don't work on cow's platelets. Uh, so we mostly use uh, heparin and INR is pretty much a standard test for that. 
Uh, the other problem is bovines are multigastric, as we know. On its own, it's not a problem, but uh, the rumination and they have four stomach that requires very huge percentage of cardiac output and any ischemia, any infarct in the stomach will be detrimental for the cow because the cows don't know that their, their stomachs don't work. They just keep eating and eating and they don't ruminate if the stomach is infarcted or dead. They just literally keep eating and they, you, you think that it's fine for a few days until they just die. There's no turning back once you have uh, infarctation in, in the cow stomach. So other problem is we know the cows are big, the big chest. Uh, so anatomy has not been uh, used commonly uh, for, especially for vets. Uh, on the thoracotomy, rib sections, and you put a, a vet in it and, and that's be it because the cow normally sits on their chest. So if you have an open chest and wires and everything else, you may have problem. But as far as the total artificial heart goes, Sternotomy is probably the best and the uh, thoracotomy, it does not work very well with the anatomical structures and the way you have to make the uh, anastomosis to the vessels. So they tried here uh, to do the sternotomy for the total artificial heart and so far it has worked very well. The heart anatomy itself is very similar to human being. As you can see, all the inlets and outlets, the, uh, the atrias and uh, uh, the pulmonary artery and aorta are pretty much where the uh, human beings are. So it makes very easy or semi-easy to, to, to anastomose the right atrium and the left atrium and also the uh, pulmonary artery and the, the uh, aorta. The other big problem is they have very small aorta. Uh, they branch out as soon as the aorta comes out of the aortic heart, they branch out in the big bronchiocephalic trunk and the descending. Uh, so you barely have enough room to cannulate and cross clamp and have enough aorta to connect uh, to, the, uh, to the graft of the uh, uh, total artificial heart. As you can see here, uh, the right, uh, the common bicephalic trunk is very, very big, and you can barely see the uh, arch of aorta and uh, the left subclavian. So basically, you 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 have maybe three centimeters, or four centimeters at the most to work with, and uh, you you barely have enough aorta after that. The most common breed that, that they're used in US is uh, Corriente. They're a very small, hardy breed. They are, they're they're uh, breed, bred for the sport and roping. Uh, six months about, they, uh, they weigh about 80 to 100 kilo. They're a strong, slow growing breed, like we said. The weight gain in 30 to 90 days is much less than the other breed, which is hand, hand, you can handle because the VADs and artificial hearts are designed for human. Uh, Normally, you don't have any more than five to ten liters or uh, liters per minute capacity of the device. So, the other problem uh, with the research uh, in any uh, animals is the actual disease to make to cause an actual disease into the heart, like uh, for total artificial heart or for VADs, you need uh, a, a ventricle that is diseased. The vent ventricle is not robust. It's very hard to create that in cows. Cows regenerate very, very fast. You can give them a uh, uh, ischemia, you can give them a coronary heart attack and they'll recover very fast. You can, you can, you can uh, uh, make do damage to the heart itself and then you wait for a few days and they will recover themselves and they'll go back to what, what they were. The problem uh, was emphasized in, in, in the uh, trials of uh, HeartMate 2. The HeartMate 2 is all the uh, test subjects, all the models, all the tests that were done in the research lab on cows were worked very, very well. They were worked as intended. And the first trial in human was done in uh, Europe and they put 12 HeartMate 2s, 11 of them 
uh, develops thrombus in, uh, in, in, in the pump and they die. So needless to say, it was almost shelved. It was almost uh, about, they were about to uh, uh, nix the project. Well, going back, Hartmut one had evolved to have a really rough surface inside it was silicone and you know, Steve can tell you about more. Uh, about that more uh, silicone with a uh, rough surface and it would grow a pseudo intimal or neo epidermis layer on it that required uh, very little uh, anticoagulation in human being. So obviously the heart mid too was also evolved to have rough surfaces in it. Well, there was there, rough, uh, there was uh, rough surfaces all over from the, all 11 that died had thrombus on at the bearing on the pump. None of the test subjects had no uh, 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 issues with the thrombus and the bearing. There was no indication of any kind of uh, bearing problems. What was the problem? The problem was the heart was very healthy. So even with the machine, the, the heart was actually creating every systole was very robust, very high flow through the machine. And that kept continuous washing of any possible clot or it didn't even allow to develop the clot. So the ball bearings were smoothed out and the material was changed. And after that, there were more tests were run. And, and as we know, HeartMed 2 is probably, not probably the most implanted uh, at, the, at the time, still is. Uh, as far as the bypass stubs goes on the calf, bicable, venous, uh, venous uh, we used to do uh, double arterial, bicaval arterial, because of the issues with the uh, clamp and remaining aorta. But recently they have uh, figured out a way and they're working on doing just one aortic cannula. So last few cows we've done, we've done uh, uh, with the one aortic cannula. And we stay warm-ish uh, because they like to come off at 838, 39 degrees centigrade before we go to ICU. Uh, blood pressure, 70, 80, 85, uh, flow more than 55 per kilo. So how do, how do they do on, in post-op management for, these are for bivacores now, uh, total artificial heart. Uh, what do they look for? They look for obviously the aortic pressure, the right atrial pressure, left atrial pressure, pulmonary artery pressure, uh, CVP, and also they look at the uh, systemic and pulmonary vascular resistance that's continuous all the time for first few days. Uh, the other uh, parameters are for the, uh, for the unit itself is right and left flow because this machine, this device has only one moving part, only one motor. Uh, uh, you want to know that motor speed and impeller position, the impeller also the position of the impeller, axial position of the impeller can move left or right and that will uh, change the flow dynamics on, on, on both side left and right, depending upon where the impeller is. And it's automatically controlled. Uh, so you want to know the impeller position also. Obviously you want to know how much power and how much current it needs because that will determine uh, uh, the, the resistance uh, to flow. The other big problem I did not real, realize until I looked into this is the uh, brain natriuretic uh, peptide. BMP is produced by cardiomyocytes in the ventricle. And it is, uh, a, 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 it is a, a, in response to cardiac stress and ischemia. And it plays a very important role in the cardiorenal pr protection. So if you don't have the uh, ventricle, there are no cardiomyocytes, no BMP, the kidneys go haywire and kidneys really don't work very well. So there are continuous, uh, 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 they're continuously uh, 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 treated with Lasix. Uh, as we know, Lasix will remove more potassium. So there's always uh, a potassium chloride and it's a large amount, 480 <laughs> milliequivalent times eight hours for 24 hours. Uh, hypertonic sodium chloride also required because as you can see, the uh, BNP, the, if you don't have BNP, the uh, sodium reabsorption in the distal and the uh, proximal loop is increased, meaning 
it will excrete more sodium and you will have hyponatremic uh, account. So uh, they also give hypo, uh, hypertonic uh, sodium chloride all the time, uh, obviously mannitol as well. And as you know, a cow needs lots and lots of waters. So you have to make sure they drink very well. You have to notice, you have to uh, 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 pattern, you have to see the pattern if they're drinking, whether they're about, uh, because they're not gonna complain. They don't complain that they're in pain. They don't complain they're hungry. They don't complain they're drink. They just eat and drink all the time. So, so what, what, the, what are the observations uh, that uh, you, you need to make? Obviously, a uh, ruminating cow is the best cow. If, don't, if the cows don't ruminate, nobody gets to sleep in the ICU. Uh, obviously, the cows are awake, it's going to eat. Urination, defecation, uh, if they're sitting well, they're standing well, uh, left to right chest sounds to see if there were any uh, pulmonary issues. Uh, like I said, no rumination is a big, big problem. You have to make sure uh, uh, water intake is, is enough. Uh, as far as lab goes, PTT, uh, PT, INR, VW factor because mechanical devices, uh, plasma free hemoglobin also because you don't want to uh, chew up all the RBCs, uh, ABGs, hematocrit, electrolytes. I think they use ISTAT uh, at the lab. Head milk test on a cow. Thank you. So the Bible core is designed to increase the output as, uh, as the demand increases. So this particular model was, uh, this particular uh, 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 test subject went from 11 liters to 14 liters with exertion and autonomous speed control and the, uh, and the, and the, uh, the flow control. So up to uh, in 2019, they've done 12, 2020, as we know, uh, we do do a whole lot of those. Uh, but in uh, 2021, we did six and 22, we already done four or five uh, coming up. Uh, sixth one next month or this month, really. <laughs> That was, that was the whole uh, operation sped up. Well, after, after the, uh, the death or the termination of the uh, uh, protocol, obviously uh, necropsy done by a pathologist, a very detailed one. This is the picture of the Vibacore machine with the heart, uh, with the uh, aorta and the uh, atria and the lungs attached to it. It's very close. Uh, picture of it, as you can see, the pulmonary artery coming from the top. Behind it is the uh, aorta, right atrium, and the left atrium. So another picture is a little bit better here. You can see the aorta, PA, uh, vena cava is also attached to the right atrium. There is where you supposed to be in the human heart, human uh, body. And there are, these are the uh, bunch of patterns that they have uh, been able to uh, achieve, including most importantly, or most actually um, impressive is the last one on the corner that it can't create a uh, pulsatile flow. Remember, there is no valves in this machine. So it is so meticulous, it can so pinpointly um, uh, control the speed of the uh, rotors that it can actually create a dichrotic notch if you want to in the, uh, in the uh, arterial waveforms. It's that precise. <coughs> so these are uh, some slides saying, you know, well, we need how bad we need the total artificial heart. We know that. Uh, it's worth pointing out that there are uh, other competitions, other, other machines. 
Uh, we have two main uh, types, positive displacement and the rotary pump. Uh, positive displacement, as we all know, Syncardia have been used in hundreds and hundreds, 2,000 or more patients. Cartmed is pretty brand new, a uh, year or two from France. They've done a few cases. Uh, they both are pulsatile. Uh, the problem with that, as we know, is too many moving parts, uh, high failure, mechanical failure that require very high power. Uh, they're noisy and heavy driver, which in my opinion, you know, if it keeps me alive, I probably will learn to live with it. Uh, but nonetheless, it uses a lot of power, meaning that you don't have as much battery power to walk around with. Uh, as far as the uh, rotary pump goes, there's a Cleveland uh, clinic has a, uh, a one that they're working on similar to BioCore. Uh, there's little difference uh, in, in the engineering there, but pretty much the same uh, device. Uh, Dr. Cooley and Dr. Uh, Debeke watching Dr. Fraser putting one of those uh, in a few years earlier. Thank you very much. Thank you.